Welcome to EO Talks, Eastern Oregon's very own talk show, only here on EO Alive. Please introduce yourself and uh, tell us which office you're running for. Um, I'm Bobby Levy. I'm running for re-election for House District 58. That covers uh, most of you, Matilla County, Union County, and Wallowa County. Now, can you tell us more about what you do professionally besides working as a state representative? Sure. Uh, my husband and I are farmer ranchers. We have a, a small operation at our house. We have 100 head of sheep, and I raise large breed guardian dogs. I'm also one of the five founding members of Eastern Oregon Women's Coalition. It was started in 2006, where we've advocated for rural-urban divide and try to breach that divide by educating uh, people from the other side of Highway 97 who think that uh, Bend is rural Oregon. And so we've had uh, a very successful Eastern Oregon Economic Summit two years ago. COVID uh, kind of put a halt to that. And we're planning our next Eastern Oregon Economic Summit on June 16th and 17th. And we expect about 300 people there. Now, can you tell me more about the work you've accomplished as a state representative? So I sit on uh, the Revenue Committee, I sit on the Economic Recovery and Prosperity Committee and the Joint Ways and Means Subcommittee on Education. I also chair, along with uh, Rep. Andrea Valderrama, the Historic Poverty Work Group, and I'm on the Hanford Cleanup Board appointed by, appointed by the Speaker. And I'm also a member of the Oregon Rail Caucus, where uh, we look at transportation through uh, railway means and trying how to improve that so we have better access to to rail transportation. Um, Revenue Committee is uh, fascinating. Um, it's heavily leaned towards uh, fixing uh, taxes and that kind of stuff. And um, my goal next year, hopefully, is that we will be doing some tax uh, breaks because hopefully we will be not in the super minority for the Republicans, and we will be closer to being even in the House of Representatives where we'll have more say in what goes in that. Um, the Economic Recovery and Prosperity was a really good committee for me to sit on. We did some things that were really beneficial for rural Oregon, some of that to do with our ability to have internet access, and we got funding for that. Uh, twice, shorts in the long session and in the short session. And um, the Joint Ways and Means Subcommittee on Education, that has a long ways to go to make me a happy person. They, um, I think that parents are very important, and I think they need to have a say in what goes on in their child's education. We um, have a, a standalone early childhood education program now. And that standalone childhood, standalone early childhood education program in the long session was supposed to be part of the Department of Education. In the short session, it came back as a standalone program, all of its own, and it's heavily um, top heavy. And I'm really concerned about what changes they're gonna try to push in and take parental rights for. So that will be a program that I watch really close and that I monitor and I try to change as much as possible so that it allows the local control and for parents to be more active. Now, can you go a little bit more in depth about your personal biography? Oh, sure. Um, so I was born and raised. I was born in La Grande lived there till I was five, uh, raised in Hermiston, went to school in Hermiston. My junior year of high school, I was um, a typical teenager. And much to my parents' extreme dismay, I got kicked out of school and went back to school in La Grande because my sister and brother-in-law lived there. And they said, oh, we'll take her. She's not that bad. Lo and behold, I really was that bad. Um, I was a lot of trouble for him that year. <laughs> went back, graduated from high school. And it wasn't until I had my own kids that I realized that I really wanted to go to college. So I got a, uh, started at Blue Mountain Community College where I met my mentor, Representative Bob Jensen. He was my sociology professor. And um, he changed my life dramatically in that he always challenged me to do something better, not to just sit back and do the, the stopping point. You know, once you get to where you're at, 
Now what are you going to do is what he'd say. What's your next thing? What are you going to do next? So I ended up getting a master's degree from Portland State University with a major in uh, business administration and emphasis in financial management. Then I got into a car accident and couldn't walk for a year. So during that year, I ended up um, substitute teaching in the Hermeson School District and found out I really liked it. But um, And what I liked about it was is that the middle school students were the kids who needed the most attention. And they seemed to be drifting. And they were the type of kid that really did enjoy school, but didn't really want to be there and give the effort. So it challenged me to find ways as a substitute teacher to keep them motivated in the classroom. So the superintendent of schools convinced me I should go back to school and get a teaching degree. So I went to Eastern and got a a master's degree in teacher education. And I ended up teaching at Blue Mountain Community College for 10 years as an adjunct teacher. And that to me was the best experience I ever had because the kids were there because they wanted to and the conversations were lively and I taught business classes and it was, it was a great experience for me. Um, Eastern Oregon Women's Coalition was just another way to advance that ability to uh, educate people Uh, in things that were important to my side of the state and to me personally as a business person and um, as a human being. I really wanted to make sure that rural Oregon was represented. So, yeah, that's mostly my bio. I've been doing this since forever and I really like it. So you went in depth a little bit about uh, some of the issues you're hoping to get to in the next legislative session. Are there any others that you're hoping to tackle in the future as a state representative? Sure. We're we're actually working on that right now. I've been meeting with all the county commissioners in all three counties and uh, area business people, uh, pharmacists and um, medical providers and mental health providers. And we've been talking about things that that they would like to have some change in. So during the short session, we had a three year fix for the cat tax that uh, gave some relief to uh, pharmacists, because you know we've seen Biomark close down and uh, Rite Aid isn't doing that well, and we in rural Oregon have a lot of mom and pop um, pharmacies, and so we work to get that cat tax fixed. It's a three-year fix. My goal is to make it a permanent fix for the pharmacies, but I also don't like the cat tax at all. And so there's other places where we can tweak it and make it. Uh, the catchphrase in Oregon is equitable. So equitable for me is anybody who needs the help, not not based on a person's skin color. We've got a lot of um, people in the state of Oregon, especially in rural Oregon, who are in need of help with medical bills and pharmacy bills and that kind of stuff. So we're going to look at, we have a rural medical provider tax benefit that brings te- brings doctors and lab techs and lab scientists. Well, we found out by visiting with some of the medical providers that lab technicians and lab scientists are not covered under this rural medical provider tax benefit. So we're going to add that to the rural medical provider tax benefit. Um, We had a bill passed that was um, Senate Bill 15. 21, where it takes the local uh, control away from school boards to fire a superintendent with no cause. We have to give them a 12-month notice before you can fire them with no cause, which means they get to stay there working for 12 months. And you can imagine how unhappy either party would be, what additional problems could be done by that. And so uh, we're going to try to fix that. That's one of the things I'm looking at trying to fix. Um, and I and I think that's probably it right now. We have a lot of issues with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. We have some issues with the Oregon Department of Ag as how it um, helps distribute the wildlife, um, the wolf compensation funding 
package. And uh, ODA is really willing to work with us. ODF and W is really will, willing to work with us to make this happen. So it'll be a, a joint effort between their two offices and mine. And I will rope Senator Hansel into working on this with me as well. Now, who is your favorite Oregon historical figure? No, I, I had to think about that. I'm not really sure, but I would, I like Tom McCall. My parents knew him personally. He was a Republican. Uh, he was a governor. He had some, some really good ideas. He started the Solve program, which is an, you know, it's an environmental nonprofit group whose goal is to build, you know, volunteer action in the state of Oregon and um, build up a legacy of stewardship. Well, I'm a farmer and a rancher and you can't be a farmer and a rancher a successful one without being an environmentalist. And a lot of people don't understand that, that have no history with farming and ranching, that we are all environmentalists. And so I like that about him. Um, he started the Department of Environmental Quality. I think that was not a good thing. It's kind of gotten out of control. Um, I look forward to seeing that changed. Um, so yeah, that's my guy. I guess. No, but what you consider to be the primary sources of your personal values? Mm, easy, my faith in God. Um, I was raised, my mom's dad was a Missouri Senate mi minister. My dad's dad was a Southern Baptist minister. I was baptized in the Lutheran Church. My husband and I attend uh, New Hope Community Church in Hermiston's Baptist Church. And um, I can't imagine a day in my life a, that I don't start the day out or end the day thinking about my faith and and how important it is to me. And I always ask God to uh, direct me, guide me what I'm supposed to be doing and help me to be honest and help me to be helpful and to listen to the people who need help and where I can help to be able to provide that help. So yeah, my faith. Now you have one opponent in this election. Do you anticipate any uh criticisms from your opponent? And do you have any responses to potential criticisms? Well, I don't know my opponent, so I can't speak for my opponent. Um, I, I, everybody has a criticism of everybody. Um, and I guess if the criticism is an honest criticism, I'll listen and then I'll, I'll answer it to the best of my knowledge. Um, I consider myself a really hardworking person. I really like the job that I do. There are days that I go home and I'm just miserable and I cry, to be quite honest with you. But I think it's rewarding and um, because I really like helping people. And the only way that I see I can make a real lasting difference is to be able to change legislation so that the catchphrase is fair and equitable. Well, I'd like to change the legislation so that's fair and equitable for rural Oregonians. But next up is our world famous lightning round. So first off, ducks or beavers? Oh, beavers all the way. All right. What is your favorite restaurant in House District 58? You know, I thought about that and I'm not gonna start a restaurant war. So I'm gonna say my husband's cooking. He cooks for me every single night and he's a much better cook than me. And um, I'm pretty spoiled. All righty. What is your favorite landmark in House District 58? Oh, that's easy. On our personal farm, we have an Oregon Trail marker and people come out to our farm all the time. They bring tours out to see the Oregon Trail marker. And you can see the deep, deep ruts of the Oregon Trail that go down through our pastures. So, yeah, that's my favorite. It's pretty cool. Well, what is your favorite yeah, place to visit cool. in Eastern Oregon? Yeah. Pardon me? Oh, sorry. What is your favorite place to visit in Eastern Oregon? Oh, you know, I'd have to say uh, the mountains. They're gorgeous. I mean, anywhere. I, I, every place that I've been in my district has some sort of beautiful landmark or beautiful pastures. You know, Eastern Oregon's a beautiful, beautiful place to grow up and to be raised. And Umatilla and Union and Willow counties all have that beautiful landscape. So you can do so much. It's a very outdoorsy district, and it fits my personality really well. I don't like being stuck inside. So, do you have any final thoughts to share with our viewers? And can you let them know how they can get in touch with you? Sure. My cell phone 
is the easiest way to call me, 541-561-5557. I will return your phone calls. I don't mind the phone calls. Just don't call after 8 o'clock at night. You'll go to voicemail, and then I'll call you back tomorrow. Um, I love my job. I want to be reelected. I think there's a lot more I can do. I enjoy meeting everybody. Uh, we have coffee time set up coming up really quick. Um, now that we are back and able to start seeing everybody without masks, it's even more fun to come because now I get to actually see your real face. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs>